Welcome to the Tribes United, ladies and gents. Scotty Z here again, your guide for this adventure. And today we're joined by a friend of mine from Bali. What, how long ago did we meet, mate? 10 years ago, must have been 2012-ish, something like that. Uh, Jeremy Britton, uh, who is now not in Bali anymore, based back in Australia. And I reached out to Jeremy because Jeremy is very outspoken about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and has been in the finance space for many, many years. Um, very wizened in this realm. And I want to understand what's going on with Bitcoin. What's going on with crypto? Is it here to help us or is it controlled and manipulated? That is really the question that I keep coming back to. Um, so Jeremy, welcome. Great to have you, mate. Can you fill in a bit more of your intro and, and who you are and you know what you've done and why we should really listen to you? I love how you say wizen, like that's the grey beard that you're talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got a couple on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I started out in financial planning back in 1992. So it's wow. 30 years this year. Hmm. And um, obviously, you know, stocks and shares and property and bonds and all that sort of stuff. Um, but also because I wasn't very smart when I started, I was only 19. Um, I didn't know a lot of the stuff that my, my peers knew who'd been in the market for a while before me. So I got fascinated looking at old charts and just looking, you know, what happened to the stock market in 1965? What happened in 1945? What happened the last time there was high inflation or a war or something like that? And you start to see these patterns develop. And when you look at what, what's happened before, you can sort of tell what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. So I, I would educate my clients uh, because my, you know, before... Before moving into, into financial planning, my parents were both school teachers, so I had sort of education drummed into me. Yeah. So I wouldn't just invest people's money. I'd tell them why we're investing into this. And oftentimes, mm. yeah, we, we seemed like we were investing in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. And I'd be saying to people, just wait. This is because of what happened previously when there was high inflation, when there was high interest rates, this happened. So after, after a while, I got a bit of a knack for investing people's money. It was sometimes a little bit too early. Um, so, for example, you know, I didn't know the 9-11 plane crash was going to happen in 2001. Yeah. Had no idea. But when the stock market gets overheated too much, there's always a trigger event. And sometimes the trigger event is a war or an assassination or something like that. An event that makes people sit up and go, holy cow, what are we doing? Mm. Why are we paying $140 for a Google share when Google hasn't made a profit in 10 years? Mm -hmm. So I got clients out of the stock market. Um, 18 months, two years before 9-11 hit. Because it was overinflated. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. And the property market had been had been very, very still since the, um, the high interest rates of, of the early 90s, 92, 93. Right. So we got out of stocks and into property. And then, you know, people sitting there going, what are we doing, what are we doing? But then two hmm. years later, when the plane crash happened, the stock market crash properly took off and was just, wow, you know, we just made 300% and avoided losing 80%. Really, so, it dropped eighty percent. So quick, quickly on that though, like you're saying that when the stock market is overinflated, there is some sort of a catastrophe that brings it back to reality, um, like a war or something. How is there a correlation between stocks and prosperity and something like nine eleven? Wasn't that just like a, a terrorist attack that was unplanned and just sort of happened? How did that correlate no. to an overinflated I mean, stock if, market? If 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 nine eleven hadn't have happened, there would have been something else. Like stocks had just been going up too fast, too quickly for too long. Right. And that's that's what happens. There's these boom and bust cycles. There's not a there's not a sensible thing. Like you know, a, a year or two earlier, the Google shares were were ten dollars. Oh and, wow! You know, it went to one forty. Everyone was getting excited years. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. So ten, ten times your money in tech stocks. But yeah, you know, during the period ninety nine to two thousand and two. Even Microsoft and Apple, who had long established businesses and, and real stuff and real profits, those guys dropped by 60 and 80% respectively. Wow. You know, so Crash. imagine holding tech stocks that companies who'd been around for like 20 or 30 years at that stage, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've lost three quarters of your money. So, because they just mm -hmm. got too, too, too high too fast right. and they've got to go back to normal. Because over time you get an average, you know, and if it yeah. goes way up too, too high, it's going to come back down. And often it, it overcorrects as well. So it goes down too low and then, and then it has to back come back up to the average. Yeah, yeah. right. Because yeah. you're saying about being, and, and thank you for that 30 years, I didn't realize that you'd been in the finance industry for that long. That's really great. Again, you're showing that wise and elder uh, age there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm glad I reached out to you because that's fascinating. I, I follow Ray Dalio. Um, that mm -hmm. man to me is fantastic what he's doing now. Uh, if anyone doesn't know about Ray Dalio, self-made billionaire, um, 
the largest hedge hedge fund management firm in the world, Bridgewater Associates. Um, and he's retired effectively now, and he's just sharing all his wisdom, writing books. Principles was a great book, but he talks a lot about being that um, student of history. Exactly what you said. What happened in '65? And he's done that the the, the uh, changing world order. You've probably seen that video at least, if not the book, about what's going on at the moment with the changing world order and what we can potentially expect to happen in uh, in the finance world, in economics for globally, right, with this transfer of power. But uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, again, the correlation between you studying history. So over the last 30 years and, and, and sort of feeding into Ray Dalio, what, what's going on with the global economy, mate? Where are we heading? You know, if you're talking about 2001, there was a 60 to 80% crash because planes flew into a building. That's like, yeah. that's child's play compared to money printing in the way that we've had it in the last couple of years. Plus now they're talking food shortages, this, all the sanctions on Russia, which has increased the price of the ruble completely yeah. backfired on the global power, the, the reserve currency of the world, the US dollar, right? Is now the ruble is stronger because of their their uh, their sanctions against them. They're, oh, we're gonna cripple the Russian economy. Like what's happening with the global economy, mate? And what do you see in your, as a, as a student of history is gonna happen? Well, everything is is largely unprecedented, but there's still commonalities. Yeah. You know, like World War One was similar to World War Two, was similar to Vietnam, was similar to the Korean War and that sort of stuff. And, you know, we've had this ongoing war on terror for the last 20 odd years. <laughs> and they don't so, want it to end. It's very profitable. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the money printing thing that's going on now was basically exactly the same as or, or largely similar to what they did uh, when we had the global financial crisis. And mm -hmm. again, that was just a, a time when property prices in particular had gotten too big too fast mm. because they were giving out these ninja loans and things like that to people who had no income, no job, no assets. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the property price ballooned and people just thought, oh, look, at, you know, my property's doubled in the last three years. It's probably going to double again in the next three years. I better take a loan against it. Yeah. And it's like that, that sort of stupid thinking. Mm. I think that whatever's going on now is always going to go on, whereas mm. going, going back to you know, a, a historical sort of average is more likely. Now, mm. the, the funny thing is, um, and again, we didn't know the pandemic was going to happen. We had no idea this disease was going to have an outbreak. I, from I think China some people did. I think some people did. <laughs> we won't go maybe. there today. Maybe, maybe, but yeah, you and yeah. I didn't for sure. Um, so in, in September 2019, so six months before the pandemic, what we noticed was a repo debt default. So the, the banks borrow, int borrow money from each other at certain interest rates mm. around the globe. And normally they're paying each other 2%. And there was a liquidity event because people were borrowing too much money and couldn't pay it back. Mm. And so on September 17, 2019, the repo rate spiked up to about 15%. From 2%? From 2%. Yep. Jeez. And then dropped back down the next day to 2% as liquidity was restored in the system. And we just sort of looked at that and went, that's bad. Like, that's bad. Like, we're, we're literally got governments running out of money. What's going on? Um, we also looked at the copper price and the copper price had been going down. So you think of all the Tesla electric cars who use copper, all the copper that goes into your mobile phones and your fridges and that sort of stuff. Mm. So if people expect the economy to go well, all these manufacturers would be buying a lot of copper and say, we're going to price make more fridges up. and more things. The price mm. would go up. Mm. Copper price was going down in September. And we looked at that mm. and went, that's kind of bad as well. That's sort of showing that a lot of businesses out there were expecting that 2020 was going to be a worse year than 2019. So we had the first little red flag that gave us a warning and then the second red flag and I went, that's it. I'm not waiting for the third one. Wow. So we actually um, communicated to our clients in our, in our newsletter and also on the blog site and said, something big is coming up um, and if the proverbial hits the fan, then the government is going to react or the central banks are going to react by printing lots of money because that's what they did in 2008. That's what they did in the 1930s. Whenever there was all they've got. <laughs> yeah, they just print lots of money. Yeah. And when they print lots of money, of course, the value of money goes down because there's yeah. a lot more money in the system and scarce commodities go up. So September, mm -hmm. you know, six months before the pandemic, we said to our clients, back out of the stocks, mm -hmm. buy gold, buy silver and buy Bitcoin. Right. right, And again, we were early. We didn't know that there was going to be a pandemic. We just thought there's going to be something piling up. Mm. Something's going to happen. And of course, six months later, when the pandemic hit, the stock market took a dive. Bitcoin mm. itself took a dive. 
Mm. Um, but over the next two years, gold went up by 50%, silver went up by 100%, Bitcoin wow. went up by 800%. Jesus. So the three wow. things we recommended wow, well were done. massively profitable. Yeah. Whereas obviously the stock markets have been hammered. And even now, like we're, we're sort of like, oh, we're recovering from the pandemic now. But Netflix has just gone down by 75%. You know, 75%? Zoom, yeah, Zoom, the, the platform that we're chatting on, shares in Zoom have gone down by almost 80%. And there's almost a thousand companies uh, on the US stock exchange alone that have gone down in the last six to 12 months. So we're not and really why, recovering why? from the pandemic. We're, we're not, but why are these, like Zoom, I mean, isn't everyone at home? Netflix, isn't everyone at home? Shouldn't these things be going? Now, did they have a massive spike during they the did. pandemic and they're correcting? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so we're yeah, coming when, back when, to when, reality, when it, effectively. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They just got overpriced, like you said, what happened in the Google uh, tech yeah. stock days in the early 2000s. They're just coming yeah. back. Will they recover? Will the stock market recover? Because there is people saying now that we are moving into or we're already in a recession and that we're already in a bear market, both for crypto yeah. and for uh, stocks in general and the economy, if we're talking recession. Is that true yeah. or is this just a slight rebound based on the current events and we're going to come back up again or are we going to depression and to a, a full bear? Well, I I have a controversial view. I, I think this is- I like controversial views. Yeah, <laughs> okay, already a depression. So they're fudging the numbers yep. just to make exactly. the population keep spending and taking credit to try and inflate yep. it. But you reckon we're already in not recession, but depression, which is supposed to be three yep. quarters, three quarters of, of down, yeah? Yeah, so if we, we have, we've had two quarters, which is a, a technical recession, um, but then if they can fudge the numbers and make the third one look okay, then technically we're not in a depression. It's right. just a recession. So, but it's but just, on it's paper, so bad. exactly. And, and the fear yeah. in the marketplace is what causes people to stop spending, which causes the yeah. increased re recession and, de and depression. So they want to avoid that, especially yeah. how fragile the economy is already. But did, did, did they have two quarters uh, on the books? going down already? Like, have we been officially declared to be in a recession or do they fudge the numbers the whole way? They definitely fudge the numbers. I mean, you, you know yeah. yourself from going out and buying things that prices have gone up. Oh, right? mate, even in and Russia, is... uh, even in Russia, but we, the sanctions haven't hurt us that much, but I know a lot of other countries are suffering, but yeah, for sure, prices are going up. Yeah. Everyone, I mean, this, this is again, something we predicted because we, we said there's, there's going to be something go down. Yeah. The central banks are going to print money and of course prices are going to go up. So be prepared for higher inflation. And that's why we, we suggested the scarce commodities, gold, silver and Bitcoin, because you can't yeah. create any more of those. Yeah. So they're scarce, they're going to be more valuable. Yeah. But what, what we're, we're seeing is like the, the government's coming out and saying, oh, the inflation rate's only going to be 3%. And like, you, no, what's the real actually, inflation rate? <laughs> what's the real inflation rate? Like, yeah. have you gone and bought oranges lately? Have you bought fuel exactly. lately? Exactly. You know, the rent, the rents have gone up by twelve and fifteen percent across Australia. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. when the government says the official inflationary figure is is you know seven percent, you can bet your bottom dollar that the real inflation being felt by normal people is yeah. probably closer to twenty or thirty. But they incredible. they've fudged the figures by using the basket of goods. Like back in the nineteen seventies they used to have a basket of goods and say, okay, we'll allocate a certain amount to rent and food and fuel and clothes and whatever, whatever. Uh, they didn't include toaster ovens and microwaves and, and iPhones and things like that. But in the 1980s and the 1990s, when we were going through, again, higher inflation, they fudged the numbers by putting things in with, because we were getting all of our stuff from China and the Chinese keep dropping the prices of TVs and phones and things mm -hmm. like that when the new technology comes out. So they can say, oh, yeah, inflation is only this because they're counting things that have dropped in value. But you and I aren't going out and buying a new car every year. We're not buying a new TV every year. We're not necessarily buying a new iPhone every year. Mm. However, we are buying food and clothes and fuel every, every day. week. Yeah, every week yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the numbers are definitely fake. Um, we don't trust the government, but obviously no. the government's trying to quell the panic because if people panic, there's going to be riots in the streets, there's going to be people smashing open windows of shops and stealing yeah. stuff and robbing people. So they just want to say, it's not so bad. Mm. Here's our official figures. That's why they're called official figures. And, yeah, um, exactly. There's already riots in the streets. Sri Lanka, mm. bankrupt, run out of money, corrupt government, 
controlled by one family it, and you guys probably in australia or america or canada where you're watching this just go and like duck duck go don't google search anything these days go on duck duck go search i think they're a bit controlled i use a brave browser with a brave search yeah. engine now by the way a brave is really good uh to try and, and you get, get free crypto for doing that mate yeah, I've got, to, I've got to set up the wallet. It keeps telling me to set up the wallet. I'm like, ah. And we'll get to crypto in a second because I've got a love-hate relationship with Bitcoin because it's bit me a few times and then it kisses me again and it bites me again. I'm like, what are you, are you going to love me or are you going to hurt me? I'm not really sure yet. It's like a beautiful dog. Uh, but Sri Lanka right now, guys, go and check out Sri Lanka. They are in food shortages. There's, there's no gas. There's no fuel. There's like riots on the street. They're pulling wealthy people out of their cars and beating them. You know, Pakistan right now with Imran Khan getting um, ousted, uh, which may or may not have been like a, a, a politically motivated coup, like we saw in Ukraine in 2014 um, or in other places that America and the deep state has has put their feelers into. How far we want to go down that rabbit hole, I'm not sure. But they're, they're talking about running out of money, trying to get money from the IMF. They could be, Pakistan could be out of cash in the next two months. Food shortages, they're talking about energy shortages here in Europe, especially because of blame Russia. Of course, it's Russia. No, it's your sanctions against Russia. So this is trickling out. And then you're saying a wealthy country like Australia is experiencing, say, 20 percent real inflation. And that's only two, three months after this Ukraine conflict, which seems to be the new pandemic, right, has started. So what, what, what do you see is going to happen over the next 6, 12 months, 2 years, 36 months, 3 years, you know, this short period, we're talking to 2025, with people who are literally living, most people are living with a couple of thousand dollars in savings if they're lucky, if they're mm. lucky, right? Most people, you know, so what is going to happen to people in Australia, in America, in Canada, in these wealthy nations with everything that you see is happening? What we've been saying for a while is to, to get your money out of cash yeah. because cash, obviously, central banks can just print more and more and more of it, whereas obviously, you know, scarce things like even oil, land, you know, coffee beans, that sort of stuff, mm. like, you know, grow your own veggies, have your own chickens, just decrease your reliance on what the system is actually producing and yes. increase your reliance on yourself mm. because things are going to get worse before they get better. Things will get better. Let me say that. You know, things are yeah. going to get better. I'm not like a doomsday prophet or anything like that. But we've got to go through this crap. And I mean, you know, as, as a good financial advisor, we used to say to people, you should set aside 10% of your income into savings or investment, right? Mm. So set aside 10% 10, 10 of your income, spend 90%. At the, like, we'll, we'll just do round figures. So at the end of a year, you know, like let's, let's say there's, there's 12 months a year. At the end of a year, you've basically got one month worth of income saved 1.2 yeah a little bit more right. great so you know if you have two good years then you've got two good months worth of income mm -hmm. but then if you have a bad month bang yeah you've got to live on that and it's going to take you another year to save that up right mm -hmm. you have two bad months it's going to take you two years to save that up so mm -hmm. we've just gone through pretty well 24 bad months yeah you know if you have six bad months whether it's an individual or whether it's an entire country doesn't really make much difference and get let's face it the governments aren't saving 10 percent of their income they're spending more than they I, they're spending more than oh, as fast as they yeah. possibly can i oh, so but elbow, one bad year means it's yeah. going to take 10 years to yeah. get over this up so they're going to have to increase the the currency that's in the system which is going yeah. to lead to hyperinflation they're going to have to increase taxes they're going to do lots of things like that because this is the pain. This is the hangover. Usually lasts longer than the drunken the drunken fun part. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be terrible for a really long time, but you would expect that it's going to take you know maybe five or six years for things to get back to what we used to call normal. And do you uh, think it will get to some place of normality again, or there are people saying that this is the end of? the Federal Reserve, uh, meaning the, the US dollar as the global reserve. Um, and that there is, like Ray Dalio is saying, there is a changing world order, that the yuan, China, potentially coupled with Russia as a partner uh, to, you know, Russia is a stronger economy than it was 30 years ago, let's say, when they were literally bankrupt with the collapse of the USSR, yeah. where they had to, over the last, I think in 2016, they made their final payment to pay off the debt of all of the territories that were once the USSR, including the debt of Ukraine, by the way. Ukraine didn't pay their own debt. The Baltics didn't pay their own debt. Russia actually paid their debt off under Putin's stewardship. He's done very well economically. And what I love about Putin, you know, while I'm ranting on him, um, <laughs> they had a six. They had 
at the start of this Ukraine before half of it was stolen. $600 billion, half of their GDP, annual GDP, in reserve, in cash. Yeah. Like you're saying, be a good steward of your money, save 10% a year, and then you'll have money for the tough times. He had half yeah. of his, he had six months of his, of his, like if you earn your money annually salary, mm. he had six months in reserve. Half of that was stolen. And that's why he changed to the yeah. ruble uh, for payments and gas, right? You're not gonna steal more of my money. He's weaponizing gas. No, he's being smart. You stole $300 billion in, in your, your currency that was his money, mm. uh, well, our money. Our, I'm becoming Russian, mate. This is going good over here. <laughs> I speak Russian That's now. That's a controversial opinion. Come on. Oh, mate, yeah. it is. And, and bring it on. Like, I, I'm all, again, I'm, I'm all about controversy. But I, I see, I'm, I'm back in Ray Dalio that the American dollar is going down and China yeah. is, is going up. And they have so much political conflict in America right now. You know, the, the, the divide between the two is ridiculous. And, yeah. I, you know, I don't necessarily love the Chinese model, although Ray Dalio is open to it. Uh, the Chinese model is pretty full on, in my opinion. But look at what they've done for their people over the last, say, 50, 60 years. How many mm. people they've pulled, and not even people, but, but the percentage the of their population. Years. Look what they've done, yeah. mate, pulling people out of poverty, literally yeah, out yeah. of poverty with their industry. And America's going mm. the other way. More people are going into poverty. There's more divide, not only racial, but political divide. And now the massive money printing that they've done, and they is meaning we, we're satellites of, we're like the USSR days, we're satellites of America, right? Look what we've yeah. done. Um, so yeah, what's your thought on that? Like, are we going to see a currency, uh, a, a global shift, or like what Putin's saying, there'll be a multipolar world, no longer a unipolar world, and China and Russia and its allies, India potentially as well, potentially Brazil, the BRICS and more, will form their own more rising strength while this Western us led dominated uh financial system is going to decline that seems to be what's happening in my opinion but what's your thoughts on it if you if you want to make billions of dollars and if you want to be right, able to predict, <laughs> if you want to be able to predict the future like you know making billions is just being in the right place at the right time yeah right and sometimes you get there a little bit early but you just got to have faith and hang on mm -hmm. and and that's usually what we do we, we, we might be six months early we might be two years early but we're always ready to go when the next wave hits so mm. you just got to look back throughout history and I'm going way, way back. Like you have a look at the, the Roman Empire and the Egyptian Empire and the Greek Empire and the Ottoman Empire. And these wow. things, like these guys were the most powerful in the world. They were like mm. this giant octopus that was straddled in the entire world, took taxes from everybody, you know, had the biggest empire. And the average length of time is about 107 years, you know, oh, maybe wow. 200 years, you know, 300 years. But Rome was, Rome was going down for a long time before the fall of Rome. And one of the mm. things that the Rome did was actually debased its currency. They used to have you know, gold, silver, and copper coins. But after fighting these endless wars, you know, in, in Northern Ireland and, and Northern Europe and things like that, they started to run out of money. And they debased their coins by putting more and more lead in them. Mm. And people got upset then because their currency was worth less. People were riding and the prices were going up and the prices mm. of, of togas and sandals and medications and things were rising. And... The, the, it was obviously the businesses were putting the prices up because they weren't making enough money. Rome mm. implemented price controls. Right? Oh, wow. Now, this has been done again and again and again. Like, US has obviously been the world's biggest empire for the last century or so. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's only a young country. It's only about 200 years old, similar to Australia. Mm. But they've been the number one for the last century or so, but their power is waning. As you said, the economic disparity between 1971 where the average CEO's wage was about five times what the cleaner earned. Mm. And now it's like 300 times what the cleaner earned. Yeah. So the economic disparity is massive, which is sort of like what happened in the French Revolution. You've got these super rich, super powerful people and then everybody else living in poverty. Mm. Also what happened in Rome, also what happened in Egypt. And eventually mm. people rise up, they get their pitchforks and they get their axes and they get their little flaming tiki torches yeah. and they just go, this is enough's enough. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying there's going to be a French revolution in the US, but there will be a lot of people who want to break away from the system. And maybe they'll start by going to other countries. Maybe they'll go mm. and live in Bali or Thailand or something like that, where the tax yeah. system is more favorable, where they feel more wealthy and more in control. Mm. And obviously, people pulling the money out of the US dollar to put into gold, silver, Bitcoin, buying land, traveling internationally, setting up a, a foreign corporation. Yep. The more people exiting the US dollar, the obviously the value is going to go down. Mm. Now, I, I wrote this in, what was it, 2006 when I, when I put out my first book saying that the US is on the ropes 
and China is going to be the new America. Wow. And people laughed at me. Yeah. yeah. So that was a long time ago. But I, was, mm. I actually spent a month in China and looking at what was going on then before they even got the, the, the Olympics in Beijing. Yep. And the amount of infrastructure that was going in, the amount of outsourcing that was going in, mm. and all the money flowing from, from the Western countries, because mm. we wanted cheap TVs, we wanted cheap iPhones, we wanted all this stuff. And now, like, when's the last time you saw something that was made in Australia? When's the last time you saw something that was made in the USA? Happen. Like, yeah. nothing. No, Everything's from made China. in China. Yeah. So, but the interesting thing is, and we've observed this as well, like, even when China became this massive economic powerhouse, only in the last sort of 20 odd years. And they've, they've absorbed all this money. But the Chinese have also learned the lesson. They saw the Western world outsourcing all their labor to China. Mm -hmm. And they're going, okay, these companies are getting paid for basically doing nothing. Like you're paying for the microwave and they're just delivering the microwave. They didn't actually manufacture it. They didn't mine the metals. They didn't do this stuff. So the Chinese have been outsourcing their stuff. And there's economies like obviously India, is you know yeah. the intellectual outsourcing capital of the world, yeah, yeah, and also Africa, which is Africa's another one, which is like China was 30 years ago. There's a billion people on the continent, and most of them are well educated. You know, particularly like you go to a country like Zimbabwe, there's 95 percent of people can read and write English you know, really? up to a high school That's level. Great. Yeah, 95 percent literacy, mm. but also around about 95 percent unemployment. So Jesus. they're very smart, they're very clever, but they're sitting around with nothing to do. And the average income is around about $2.70 a day. Mm -hmm. So if you're a smart Chinese person who's getting paid $5 an hour to make T-shirts or watches or whatever, you go, yeah. oh, I can actually outsource this to Africa. And that's what we've seen. I've mm -hmm. literally been in that country, right? And there's this massive hangar where these people are sewing blankets and clothes and things like that. And they're sewing on labels saying made in China. And I'm like, dude. Like we're in Zimbabwe, Zambia is wow. just over there. How can you sell on these labels saying made in China and the Chinese guy goes, oh, we own the land. We're Chinese, we own the land. So we say that this is China. I'm like, okay, that's some dodgy practices right there, but whatever. Yeah. So some of the stuff that you've seen that's made in China has actually been outsourced by the Chinese. And so we're going to see another massive Makes sense. as well. Business sense. I mean, why yeah, not? Wherever, wherever the labor is cheaper and right now. Yeah, exactly. It's like, China, but it's becoming more Africa. You know, there's, there's even mm. countries sourcing oil from Africa because they don't have to go to the Middle East. They don't have to fight with people. There's plenty of labor force over there to build the oil wells and to work in them and things yeah. like that. And there's plenty of, there's plenty of resources. You know, they've got oil, they've got gold, they've got diamonds, they've got all this sort of stuff, lithium. Yeah. All the stuff you want is just sitting in Africa. So yeah. there's going to be a and massive land. shift. I know China's been buying up farmland in Africa like nobody's business, right? To feed yeah, yeah. their own population. So growing it and exporting it back to China. Yeah, yeah. I mean, food is, is again, one of those scarce commodities. Yeah, you know, oh, you massively. Grow it, and more and more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it will be. They, they're, you know, expecting and they're predicting food shortages right now. Uh, yeah. For Europe and in the UK, I watched another video this morning about food uh, and no energy shortages in the UK, and they're prepping uh, the UK and parts of Europe for like rationing this winter. It's going to be a cold winter. You will not have enough energy. Blame Russia. Uh, but this guy was actually saying like, you know, the UK gets it's it's in the you know less than ten percent basket of com of countries that they get their oil and gas from the UK, but they're blaming Ukraine. Uh, the Ukraine conflict, there's like, no, guys, you guys have messed this up yourselves. Obviously, that's a part of it, but it's your sanctions that are hurting you. Anyway, that's another story. So, mate, look, it's fascinating. I think that what, what you and I are saying is the same, and you said it in 2006. China's on the rise and America's on the decline, but we yeah. are tied to that dollar. The whole world is tied to that dollar. And now with Russia and their sanctions, obviously moving away from the US dollar as the, the reserve currency for, for energy, gas and oil and saying, no, 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 you need to set up rubles accounts in order to buy our energy. They've already started to move away from the US dollar uh, and again, the, the, the global currency. And then uh, with the yuan, with China, union pay in China and mir in Russia, which means world, it also means peace, same word for world and peace. I love that in Russian. Uh, they're joining forces and creating their own payment system because Russia is being kicked off swift. And now all of a sudden, these these superpowers are starting to combine financially not just with trade but actually in the financial system so could it be that the world shifts gradually that more and more countries are like whoa the america's payment systems are going down this chinese predominantly but with russian backed 
uh, but you can, you know, China is the one, uh, maybe let's just move over to there. And there is a transition for those countries that aren't so patriotic to the American dream. Um, you know, the, the Africa's, the, the Asian countries, the Middle Eastern countries, because really it's only the Western, the Western countries like Europe and, and, you know, a couple of satellite states over in the Pacific that are, um, that are really, yeah, that are that patriotic. Do you think that these countries are just going to naturally go to the winning side and say, hey, look, I'm going to go over here because it's more natural and we could avoid a global financial collapse? Or do you see a global financial, financial collapse coming? Even even the the so-called global financial crisis of, of two thousand eight, yeah, um, yeah, it was it was really the Western world that was affected. So obviously the US was the one who was doing most of these ninja loans, yeah, and obviously they had the biggest fallout. So you had banks like Bear Stearns, you know, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, uh, Lehman Brothers, banks that were like one hundred and fifty years old who literally just went bankrupt. Yeah. Um, wasn't so much in Australia. Obviously, yes, we had the stock market go down and people panicked and, you know, housing prices went off the boil and things like that. But what happened in Detroit was a house that used to be 750000 you could now get for un under 100000 Like Crazy. they literally had 70 to 80% price drop. Imagine mm. if you put down a 10% deposit for your house and you borrowed, you know, 80 90%, yeah. all of a sudden your house is only worth the 10% deposit. And you owe five times what the house is worth. Oh, like that exactly. was really, really bad. Yeah. But particularly centered on the US, it's kind of like this the bomb site and then the crater sort of spread out to the rest of the world. Well, they caused the global it as financial well. crisis. Yeah. 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 The global financial crisis was was affected the UK because the Bank of England was lending to a lot of the banks in the US, affected Australia and anyone who traded with the US, which obviously, you know, as Australians we did. Yeah. But China was massive. You know what they called the GFC in China? wasn't the global financial crisis. They called it Go Forward China. Right? So wow. everybody, yeah, with this collapse, everybody wanted cheap stuff, right? The stock yeah. market was down, property market was down, people were panicking, and yeah. you got to get your stuff from somewhere. So it led to a massive increase of the Chinese supplying goods and services. Wow. So, you know, we're not told any of that. Went, no, their economy went spectacularly. Really? Um, so I, I, see, I, I wrote the book in 2006 saying that there was going to be this, this massive crash, but again, didn't know what was coming out of when, it. But yeah, you're early focusing, again. Yeah, yeah, we're focusing on, on the Freddie, Freddie Mays and Fannie Max, and the US was actually saying, oh, you know, we're this much in debt uh, as, as a government, as a country, but they weren't mm. counting all the mortgage debt. They weren't counting all the student loan debt. And of course, that was, that was only the government debt, which was already right. off the charts. Yeah, yeah. So again, they were fudging the numbers. And yeah. when we actually exposed it a couple of years early and said, look, there's going to be a big fallout on this because they're borrowing money at an unprecedented rate. Mm. And over time, things have got to come back to normal. Mm. So that was a global financial crisis, but it was really only the English speaking countries because the other countries who weren't trading with the US weren't relying on the US, they weren't so affected. So again, like you imagine if we go back to ancient Egypt, right? And Egypt's bustling along and doing really good and then all of a sudden greeks turn up mm. and you go oh my god like now the greeks have just obliterated all these guys and now the greek empire if we could live long enough you know we watched the romans walk into greece and, and knock out that empire so yeah. we're living through that stage yes. where we have been in this u.s empire this global empire where the imf and the u.s dollar was almighty yeah and now we're watching the change we're actually watching this thing change Incredible. in life mm. and you know maybe as, as you say, maybe we'll go back to this sort of multi-party sort of system. Um, or maybe, you know, people would hate if China stepped up because they don't like the communists. But again, that's brainwashing. If you live in the West, you hate the communists. If you've, if you've grown up there, you think it's the greatest system in the world. And as you say, mm. it's lifted so many people out of poverty. Yeah. Um, and again, living under a dictator. Well, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in China. And like you hear the stuff when you're in the West going, oh, my God, the Chinese, you know, if you're a pickpocket, they shoot you and they do this and they do that. Like, well, what would you do if you were running a country of 1.6 billion people? <laughs> you know, you can't fill up the prisons, right? And yeah. How much does it cost to send someone to prison in the US? It's about thirty dollars to $40,000 a year to put someone away and guard them and feed them. Wow. Whereas in China, they're just like, okay, you committed a capital offence, we're just going to shoot you, and then we send mm. the bill for the bullet to your family. And we, right. as Westerners, we go, oh, my God, that's so cruel. But nah. economically, it makes so much more sense. Mm. And if you take the human emotion and the brainwashing and the way you were brought up out of the equation and just go, there's a little company over here called China. There's a little company over here called US. 
this one's been borrowing money at an unprecedented rate and saving nothing. This little company has been saving money and running profitably for the last 20, 30 years. And they've got plans for what's going on in the next 30, 40 years. Yeah. So which company are you going to invest in? Exactly. You know, it, it becomes not, a, not an emotional decision, but a, a financial one. You can take the, the human emotion out of it. Uh, you know, maybe you don't like Indian politics. You know, mm. Maybe you don't like Russian politics. Maybe you don't like Chinese politics. Who cares? Those systems are running more efficiently. And yeah. the US has just gotten too fat and too bloated. So who's going to be the winner? I really don't know. In 2006, I, I said it was going to be China. China has now got more billionaires in China than in the US. Wow. Right? If, you, if you're counting, like this is again controversial, because the, the people in Taiwan don't like to be called Chinese. Yeah. Right? The people in Hong Kong don't like to be called Chinese. But China lays claim to both territories and says, okay, we own that. If you count those territories as well as mainland China, they've got more money than the US. They've got more billionaires than the US. Yeah. They are actually the number one economic power right now. Yeah, already. And wow. you know, back back in the, the sort of late 70s, early 80s, we thought, oh, there's going to be a war between Russia and US and someone's going to blow each other up with nuclear weapons. That never happened. Yeah. And even the little skirmishes that we've had nowadays have mostly been about the money and they've mostly been fought with money. So the US wasn't going to drop a, drop a bomb in the middle of Russia when they could just mm. turn off the money supply. Mm. And they go, that'll teach you bastards. We're not going to blow you up. We'll just cut down on your food and your money and the, the way you actually live and gradually starve you to death. Yeah. But guess what? Russia's Didn't like, work. we're going to plant our own potatoes and we're going to make our own cars and we're going to do this. So you, you are. You're seeing this, this kind of split. Yeah. But the US has been weaponizing the US dollar for so long. Absolutely. You know, they, they did the same thing with, with Saddam Hussein, yeah. uh, Gaddafi, Gaddafi, who wanted to, yeah, yeah. he wanted to sell oil and get gold for it. Whereas, yeah. strictly speaking, he was supposed to sell the oil for the US dollars and then use US Play dollars the game. to buy yeah. gold, right? Yeah. Which obviously, buying both the US dollars in between helped keep up the price of the US dollar. The mm. moment he starts trading oil for gold, the US dollar would go down in value, which would cause a massive impact to their, to their finances. So, right. But now they're devaluing their own currency. So it's it's amazing to watch this stuff and just go, holy crap, we are witnessing literally the fall of one empire and the rise of another empire. And maybe, as you say, we will like go back to a feudal system and every country will look after themselves. I don't yeah. know where it's going to end up. But, but the strength of the, the US dollar... you can rely on yourself, the safer so you're going to be. This is where we want to transition because in any exchange of great superpowers there is going to be some uh, casualties of war, uh, mm. the, you know, caught in the firing line. That's us. It's the average mm. people uh, that are living day to day, which is, you know, the 99% of us, we're the ones that are here seeing the 20% inflation, not the bullshit 3% on the paper. We're the ones mm. that are, you know, being told ration your energy and, and food shortages may be real, which again, they're already happening in some developing nations. So the remedy here, your prediction in September 2019 still holds true today. Tell us about what you see. And again, let's talk to Bitcoin here, but you did mention gold, silver, Bitcoin, land, um, and other scarce commodities. What are you recommending for your clients and what are you doing personally? What would you recommend for us to get through this period of transition, transformation of the US potentially going down, I, don't, I wouldn't say potentially, and China coming up? Um, what do we need yeah. to do to prepare um, just to get through this thing and, and prosper? You know, a lot of people, a lot of investors out there, sorry, last piece here, they're saying like, oh, what to do, like I watch a lot of guys on YouTube, what to do with your money to, you know, make sure that you, you don't lose your money. Most people are like, man, I don't have money. I got enough money to feed myself, right? I'm not worried. I'm listening to these guys saying where to invest all this money. That's, that's great. Yeah. But I've got a few thousand bucks here. I maybe got my house or I got a car or I got like a little bit of change in the bank. Um, again, that's the majority of people, mate. Unfortunately, that's the majority of people. What are yeah. what are you recommending to people that to get through this time? What what's the best thing that they can do? I mean, you can't you can't see out the back here because the sun's going down now. But I've got yeah. half a dozen chickens in my backyard. Nice. Right? And I've only got a very small backyard. It's maybe maybe five, like five meters by ten meters. You know, yeah. it's it's not big. I've got six chickens in there. I'm growing my own vegetables and things like yes. that. Like I can't feed the entire family but I'm just reducing my reliance mm. on an external source. Mm. Because let's face it, the central banks control the money. They, they control how much is in supply. 
Yeah. And over the, we've lived long enough to see inflation. I mean, you remember when you were a kid, 20 cents was a lot of money. You go and buy a big bag of lollies, right? right? Yeah. A dollar was, a, oh my God, a dollar was a fortune. But if you had the dollar from when you were a kid and you stuffed it under your mattress and you pick it up as a 30 year old man, you go, it's not even worth, it's not even worth it any, anything anymore. Yeah. You know? So you, you saw my post earlier today where I was talking about, you know, the, the coins used to be made out of silver yeah. in the 1960s in Australia and in the US when the currency was actually backed by gold. The mm. paper dollars were backed by gold and the actual circulating currency was like 80% silver or, or 99% silver in the US. And the, the silver and gold has held, held its value, but the paper money hasn't. Mm. And because that's the only weapon they have, that's the weapon they used in the Great Depression and the GFC, and we've seen 40% of all US dollars in existence were created in the last two years. 40%? 40% right? So is it any wonder that we're saying inflation is probably closer to 20 or 30% because yeah. they've increased the money supply by 40%. So forget about this 8% thing. Like it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make money. sense. Like if you, you double the amount of money in circulation, then yeah. the prices of things are going to pretty well double. It's, it's, it's EV math. It's you don't simple need to math. Be a rocket surgeon to figure yeah. that out. So, but again, there's, there's things that the central banks don't control. So they can't control gold. They can't control silver. Obviously, those things can be sold, bought and sold in any country in the world. You could literally have an ounce of gold in your pocket. And someone, even if they don't speak English, if you're stranded in sub-Saharan Africa or the Middle East or probably wherever in, in Turkey, people know what gold is worth. Yeah. Right? And they, you know, maybe not the guy at the local 7-Eleven will give you a tank of gas for gold, yeah. but somebody out on the street will. You know, so it, it can be used. It's a little little heavier. It's a little harder to unload. You're talking about um, gold this, coins, gold and silver, physical yeah, gold, gold and silver coins, coins gold holding building. it. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. So absolutely having that is a, is a store against inflation and always has been. So yeah. again, going back to, to ancient Egypt, right? Ancient Rome, ancient Greece, a, an ounce of gold back then would actually buy, buy a man a pair of sandals, a tunic, a hat and a sword, right? Basically a suit. Cool. Okay. Now, an ounce of gold in 1930 would actually buy a man a nice suit, right? The, the price of the suit was about 10 US dollars. Mm. So imagine Back you're holding the, the ounce of gold in the 1930s, I'm yeah. holding a $10 note. And then we wake up 100 years later, an ounce of gold will still buy you a suit. Wow. My $10 wow. is not going to buy a tie. Right? So That's for right. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, an ounce of gold would still outfit a black. Right? Or a woman, but maybe maybe women's clothes cost a little bit more. So, yeah. and, and again, silver has when we say silver has gone up in price by over a hundred percent, well, really has it? Or have they just increased the amount of paper money that you need? That's the, the thing compared to what, right? Like if you're comparing yeah. it to the dollar that they just put forty percent more of that currency. You can't really, it's not apples and it's apples and oranges. It's not apples and apples. You need to, like you mm. said, be comparing that to the buying power of stuff that I need. Roman yeah. days, I get a suit. 30s, I get a suit. Now, I still get a suit. What's gold at the moment? Exactly. What's the price? Uh, like almost 2000 a bit. Yeah, something like that, right? So two grand, you get a nice suit for two grand. Yeah. Yep. So you're saying- Shoes you, and socks included. Mate, everything you need. So look, you can go away from now if you've got a little bit of savings in the bank and we know mm. that the, the buying power of that, that actual money, I was going to say physical money and then I was like, it's not even physical anymore. It's ones and zeros on a computer screen, right? It's got worse. It's not debasing yeah. by putting lead in anymore. It's just like chuck a couple of zeros on that one. Uh, exactly. So easy to do. So you're saying if you've got some extra cash there, get out of cash because it's only going to get worse and actually buy things because if shit gets crazy and i think it's going to get crazy if shit gets crazy like you're saying if i go to a guy and say this is real gold check that out i need to get food for my family how about you swap me i'll get some you buy me some food and i'll give you this gold and everybody's happy you know any smart man looking around on the street is going to be like let's do this thing especially with those that have still got some money to buy food uh, you know if it gets to that point they're going to trade that the money will be worth less but Average people now, how much is one one little gold coin? You can get them for fifty bucks, hundred bucks. Uh, depends. Yeah, it depends if, on if the you're size. Buying of it. by grams, like, but, but an ounce, an ounce, an ounce gold coin is still going to cost two grand. Yeah, but, but little coins. Okay. I, like, I, I was buying them years ago. Like I was buying 50, fifty bucks, hundred bucks for these little like, 
gold coins, like physical coins I can yep. put in my pocket. And these are sort yep, of like, yep. like you're saying, Luke, we can be using these on the streets. If you've got more money, having physical gold, but like bullion bars, yep. uh, makes more sense to store that wealth. But for using money, and you can actually mm. get silver coins, gold coins. Now, what about, yep. and, and, and I'll come back to the point about chickens and having less reliance on the actual system. But what about Bitcoin? Because that was sort of where we were coming into this. What's going on with Bitcoin, mate? It's on a computer. It seems to me to be manipulated by whales, people who are pumping and dumping this this crypto scene so that all of the mm. small investors freak out, sell, they buy low, pump it again, make another crash, everyone freaks out, sells again, they buy more. Is that happening or is Bitcoin really the decentralized freedom that it is being touted to be? Well, yes and yes. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, so you're you you're you're the, big on crypto, eh? You're long on crypto. It's 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 the future. Well, well, some some crypto. Right? Okay. When, when I first saw crypto seven years ago, um, well, actually, it's more than that. Ten years ago now, someone showed me Bitcoin and said, "You're a financial advisor. You'll get this." And I looked at the Bitcoin and went, "No, I don't get it. I, yeah. I don't actually get it. I don't understand it." Um, and a couple of years later, someone showed it to me again. And by that stage, like Bitcoin was about three hundred bucks or five hundred bucks. Um, oh, Ethereum right. had just come out, um, and there was a few other little projects like IOTA and, and this sort of stuff. So I looked at crypto and went, oh, it's not just Bitcoin. There's actually like a little tiny stock market. Mm. And you look at any stock market, any country anywhere in the world, and there's good, solid companies, and there's a lot of crap, yeah. right? And sometimes the crap goes up and down in value. And like we were talking before about you know, when Google dropped by, by like 90%, Apple and Microsoft dropped by 60 and 80%. But at the same time, like the companies who are supplying your fuel for your car, the companies who are supplying your medication, the companies who are supplying your groceries, those ones didn't drop, right? Mm. Because they make profit week in, week out. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, if the economy turns sour, you're not going to buy a new iPhone. You're not going to buy a new Microsoft product. Yeah. You're probably going to cancel your Zoom subscription, but you still got to eat. And grandma mm. still needs her medication. We still need fuel for the car. Even mm. if you sell your car and you start taking taxis or Ubers or whatever, somebody's going to be using that fuel or heating the house. So there's some companies that are just always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And again, Bitcoin I refer to as digital gold because it's in finite supply. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins ever in the world. Yeah, They can't make any more. You can mine them. And sure, in the 1860s, you could walk through a gold field and just kick your toe and you'd pull up a bit of gold. Yeah, right? yeah. But after all the surface gold was taken, then you had to start digging down in big pits. And after all the miners who were like, you know, digging down their own little pits that they own themselves, that got it even more scarce. And so now you have to mm. dig a hole that's like 800 metres deep, sometimes, you know, 2,000 feet deep. And yeah. you have big trucks to try and get the last bit of gold. And the harder it is to get the gold out of the ground, obviously, the more the value goes up. Mm. So Bitcoin's got that halving effect built in because Satoshi, in his infinite wisdom, knew that computers get faster and faster every few years. The iPhone that you got in your pocket is more powerful than all the computers that existed on the world at the time of the Apollo moon land, right? Mm. So, you know, back in the day, you could mine Bitcoin on your laptop. Now you can't. Now you need yeah. specialized equipment. You need big banks of computers and things like that. And in mm. about 18 months' time, the reward for mining Bitcoin is going to halve again. Right. So it's going to become twice as scarce. Hmm. Right, which is again similar to gold and silver because no normal person can go out and dig and find gold and silver these days. You hmm. need to have massive amounts of capital, massive amounts of equipment. Yeah. So, and the more we dig down below the surface and we have these massively deep mines, silver and gold, again, more scarce, going to become more valuable. And if the central banks are printing money like confetti, then of course the price of everything's going to go up. But people are still going to flock to these scarce commodities, particularly ones that have held their value for centuries. The but Bitcoin is, like, hasn't, and it's not a commodity. It's a new technology that is completely mm -hmm. digital. How is it then being likened to or in the same category as things like gold and silver and land and these yeah. actual physical things that I can put in the bank or go away and do something with? How is Bitcoin yeah. now in the same conversation as that? I, I get the, the the twenty one million and all of that. They can't, yeah, yeah. you know, it can't. Uh, it has to go up in price. But yeah, fill me in here. I'm missing the point though. Like it's still digital. Yeah, even with stocks, right? Like there's a, there's a company like Apple, if they want to do a capital raising, they can print more stocks. Yeah. Right. You got companies out there who do stock splits, and you know Microsoft got up to like three hundred dollars a stock. 
and people went, oh, I'm not going to buy that, it's too expensive. And they said, well, how about we make the stock $150 instead of $300, but you need to buy twice as much. And people mm. went, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good deal. It wasn't, <laughs> really. It's just it's like a psychological thing. number, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I remember buying gold at $300 back in oh, 2001, I think it was. Wow. Um, and I was thinking, gold's expensive, man, like 300 bucks. And then like in the next 12 months, gold went up by about 10%. And I was like, this is bullshit. So I sold my gold and I started buying stocks and shares that would go up like 30 or 40% a year. But yeah. of course, you know, they go up too high, they come back down. And over the time, gold has just ticked along nice and slowly. Yeah. So when we say um, Bitcoin is digital gold, it's because it's scarce. You can't make any more of it. Yeah. Uh, and it's getting harder and harder and harder. And it, oh, that halvening will continue till the year 2140 is when the last Bitcoin will be mined. That long? Oh, I didn't realize it was going to take yeah, that yeah. long. Like we're, we're both going to be dead by then. Like oh, 2, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe another 100 years, possibly. Who knows? Um, but it's, it's that, that scarce commodity nature of it. But the fun yeah. part is that, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, if I wanted to show you a picture of my cat, I would have to put it in an envelope and send it to you through the physical mail. If I wanted yeah. to send you a letter, I had to write it down and send it to you through the physical mail. Now we've got email. So I can send you a picture like that. I can yeah. send you a letter like that, right? We can have a video call. Like imagine doing this phone call 20 years ago. What, no, bloody, what it would have cost yeah, well, that's <laughs> to right. yeah. phone internationally back then. Yeah. So the technology has now been transferred over to money. What they're, they're calling it Web3, mm. right? Because Web1 was basically just, you know, a stock standard page you could go and look at. I could go and look at. That's about it. Yeah. Web 2 was when we started to have the things we could social. actually interact with blogs yeah. and social media and that sort of stuff. So yeah. you could become a creator as well as a consumer. And yeah. Web 3 is going, okay, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if I could actually have an ounce of gold and I could send it to you via email? So mm. even when I looked at Bitcoin again back in 2015 and someone said to me, you know, there's this Bitcoin thing, there's only 21 million Bitcoin. I'm like, yeah, so what? Mm. They said, well, it's the same value everywhere in the world and you can email it to people. And back then, like we had staff outsource. So we had, we had people in, um, God, where were they? China, Indonesia, Africa, and Fiji, right? And some of these people had a bank account. So we'd transfer money in the bank account and it would cost like 10 or $15 to transfer yeah. the money. Some of them were unbanked, right? Mm. A lot of people in Indonesia and in some of these emerging economies, they don't have a bank account, right? Mm -hmm. So you're talking to a 50-year-old person who's never owned a bank account in their life because banks are too expensive and their currency was unstable. So we try and send this person 200 bucks via Western Union and yeah, it costs yeah. $39 and they have to go to the Western Union office with their little receipt and they pick up the cash. So I'm paying like, you know, sometimes 10 or 20% of the value just in bank transfer fees. Crazy. And someone said, you know, you could send $10,000 worth of Bitcoin to someone for about five cents. And I'm like, oh, okay, tell me more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or how do they get? How do they turn the Bitcoin back into money at the other end? Oh, they can do that localbitcoins.com. They can go into you can get a card now. Just spend it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it was really the thing that attracted to me was I could email it instantly. I could mm. send money to you instantly, and it would cost a fraction of a cent. Because yeah. if I'm sending you a thousand dollars in Bitcoin or a hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin, it costs the same amount. I can send a you lot a billion dollars. There's a lot of utility in it. I agree with that. There's a lot of utility. Mm. And we're just talking Bitcoin, not even like the cryptocurrencies that are designed for payment transfers. And, you know, they're not, they're not all equal. Like you said, some are good and some are not so good. Yeah, yeah. But what about this idea of manipulation? And can, can gold and silver markets be manipulated? I'm pretty sure that they can through, you know, big, oh, big yeah. players as well. And likely they have been over history. But yeah. history shows us that regardless of any manipulation, they're always going to hold their value or always have held their value versus the uh, money printing system or the debasing in the Roman days, but what we've got now. Mm. So what about Bitcoin? Like, is it an inevitability because of the nature of it being like a digital gold that it will increase in value versus spending power and versus the fiat currency? Yeah, I, th I think the important question you asked there is, is about the manipulation. Yeah. And even though gold is an asset that exists in every country in the, in, in the world and everybody pretty well knows what the value of it is, mm. it can still be manipulated. Right? Yeah. So 19, 1931, 1933, whenever the Great Depression was in the US, 
and Roosevelt issued a, an executive order because the, the country was going bankrupt. Banks were closing down. There was massive unemployment. Like one in four people had lost their jobs. Crazy. And so they said, okay, you know, yes, 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 the US dollar is backed by gold, but we've issued an executive order that says everybody has to hand their gold back to us. Mm -hmm. Holding on to gold privately is now a criminal offence, yeah, published crazy. by punished by 10 years in prison or a $200,000 fine. And the, the frightened citizens all handed back their gold. And what they get like 10 bucks an ounce mm. back then. And then the government collected all the gold and went, okay, now we're going to reback the currency, but the gold is now going to cost you $25 mm. if you want to come back and get it. So they artificially <laughs> inflated their currency. Cool. They artificially took advantage of people with the gold price. And yeah. yes, that can happen again. I mean, in the, in the 70s, if you have a look at the silver price through the 70s, and again, because I'm, I'm throwing historical facts out of there because I wasn't prepared for the question. I should look it up. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the company, but in the 70s, there was a conglomerate who actually manipulated the price of silver to go up by like 300%. And, and in 71, 71, they took the, yeah, the 71, they took, just for historical context, they took the dollar, uh, gold off the dollar. Off the gold standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So during that so period. It's been back like nothing. Yeah. Uh, so then it was been, thin air. Yeah, the, Brit the British pound, I call it the pound sterling because it was backed by sterling silver for 300 yeah. years. Um, yeah, that's and right. then they, they dropped theirs and, and the US dropped theirs a little while later. But in interesting fun fact, like if you were living in England back in that period, there was negligible inflation. It was less than 1% a year. So okay. if your grandfather had paid like, you know, three silver coins for his house when he was a boy, your grandchildren you know, 100, 200 years later, would pay the same price for the house, really? maybe up a little bit. There was z almost zero inflation for 300 years while I up had Up until the home. 70s, and until the 70s. No, when, when they dropped the, the pound sterling. So when the was inflation that? is, ah, oh, God, good question. I'll look that up and get back to you. <laughs> get back to us next, next yeah, episode. Yeah. I mean, they, they went yeah. from 100% back by, by silver to 50% backed and then 10% backed. That right. sort of stuff. And but they, in the period that it was fully backed, they had zero yep. inflation. Same price, exactly. 300 years. And as soon as they took it off that the, the scarce commodity that had real, mm. and I'll, I'm going to use the word tangible value rather than physical value, because again, Bitcoin yep. is not physical, but it is tangible in, like you were saying, the utility of moving money across the world is very tangible to save money. Mm. So the tangible value, as soon as they took that off, inflation went crazy because they started printing money. Absolutely. Right. And if, every, every empire that has started debasing their own currency has eventually fallen. Every yeah. single fiat currency in the world has eventually gone to zero. The Chinese did it in like the 1300s, 1200s, 1300s. They started printing paper currency and they printed yeah. too much and the currency had to get revalued. So maybe we'll have like a US dollar mark too when this one is worth less, mm. right? And they'll start, oh, here's, here's a new one. Um, Joe Biden, I read today, Joe Biden has issued the executive order to the US for the issuing of a central bank digital currency. No way, they've already they're got starting. One in China. Yeah. Yep. They've already got one in China. They've got one in India. The Chinese led by example and said, we're going to pay all the government officials with this central bank digital currency. Um, and it's programmable money. So it's it's not just ones and yeah. zeros on your computer screen. It's Crazy, actually, yeah. if you don't spend this money in two weeks, it's going to disappear. Yeah. Or you can like, only spend we... it on this product and that product, but not this product over here. Exactly. Your exactly. card won't so work. People... I want to buy beer. Your card won't work. You've been drinking too much beer lately. It's like, oh, you exactly. bastards. That's scary. Yep, they can program the money for your own protection. Yeah, exactly. So and for carbon, carbon emi and carbon emission, and you know, protecting yep. the environment, and all this woke yep. agenda that they're pushing on us. Yeah. Every time you, you want to fill up your car, they say, "Oh, you're burning fossil fuels because you've got a, a fuel car. Yeah. You're going to have to set my carbon credits, or we'll limit you, so you can only buy a hundred dollars worth of fuel every two weeks." Yeah. yeah so yeah. programmable money is is got people people who understand it are very, very frightened. And is that People based on who blockchain? don't understand it enough. Yeah. Um, well, not really. Not really. It's because so different, it's controlled it? and manipulated by the government. Yeah. So blockchain, but is the, the, is the technology blockchain? Because you can have um, a controlled blockchain, can't you? Or blockchain yeah, means that it's yeah. in, in different well, wallets well, and computers. Yeah, potato, tomato. Um, yeah. I, I, would, I wouldn't call it a blockchain. Um, it's, right. it, it's strictly speaking, it would be, but it's it's centralized. It's centrally not controlled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas the Bitcoin, yeah, it can be controlled and manipulated. We saw that, you know, back at the start of the start of May, 
um, yeah. when I, I won't say their names, but there was a couple of huge fund managers in the States. And these guys borrowed hundreds of billions of dollars, bought a lot of Bitcoin, and then dumped it onto the market and sold yeah. it for a loss because they were shorting the other side. Yeah, then they yeah, borrowed yeah. The, the UST or the, or the Terra dollar um, and then dumped that onto the market faster than the algorithm could actually pick it up. So they liquidated Luna, they liquidated Terra, they liquidated Bitcoin. And meanwhile, these guys are just laughing. You know? Crazy. I mean, we had a similar situation back in the days before Bitcoin. It was 91, 92, when George Soros actually took a massive $10 billion bet against the Bank of England. The Bank of England had been gone for hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And he just decided, hey, because I can, I'm going to liquidate this bank by borrowing their money and then selling it on the open market. Now, George Soros personally made $1 billion in one day, right? which was a lot of money 30 years ago. It's a lot now, of money everybody today. Else, <laughs> everybody else lost about $3 billion, but he did it because he could. And he saw a gap in the marketplace and went, oh, I could just be a real prick and make a lot of money. Right? Yeah. And if there's, if there's something that you can do to shortcut the system, people are going to try it. And this, yeah. is, this is a problem. Obviously, since, since Soros did that, They've put in more rules and regulations. Since people used to manipulate their own stock prices and things like that, we only have to go back as so far as OneTel and um, what was that one called? Enron and WorldCom and these sort of guys, mm. you know, buying up their own stock to inflate the price or, or telling people it was so wonderful and then actually selling out Dumping and leaving it everybody else holding yeah. back, right? Now, in, if you do that in the stock market now, you'll go to prison. Right. right? And so will crypto be regulated... Price? to stop guys like these two billionaires, is it, are we going to now regulate crypto in order to protect the average investor? Is that where it has to go? Well, the government, again, is always trying to protect you, but they've got- Because <laughs> they agenda. love us so right. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> love they're to saying, control we'll, we'll, us. We'll bring in a central bank digital currency and we'll bring in these laws and regulations. So even in the, in the document that, that Biden issued, and he wants this to happen, you know, in the next 180 days. So basically, you know, like by, six, six, by Christmas, six, six, six. Yeah. The US is going to have their central bank digital currency to protect people. Yeah. And they're going to stop other people from issuing a currency. Because let's face it, Bitcoin flew under the radar for so many years. And the first people who saw it just went, oh, it's for geeks, it's for nerds, it's for drug dealers. None yeah. of the politicians took it seriously. None of the central bankers took it seriously. Until now, it's mm. so widespread that they can't control it. Hedge and funds go, are holding Bitcoin cow. now. Like yeah, I know. institutional I know. investors have entered this marketplace in a big way. It's Jamie real. Jamie Dimon, billionaire hedge fund manager who like years ago, he said, oh, it's a big Ponzi scheme. It's all going to fail, blah, blah, blah. Now he's one of the biggest owners of Bitcoin on the planet. Yeah. All right. And this is so my thing is though, the... is are these, yeah, go. I was going to yeah. say like the governments can't control it. So yeah. the best they can do is say, okay, we're going to put in some rules and regulations around this thing. Like the governments can't really control the internet. In China, yeah. yes, they've got the great, the great firewall. But in the US, they can't really control the internet. If you want to share smutty pictures or if you want to send wire transfers and buy drugs and things like that, you can. There's a way. Yeah. You, you use a VPN or Silk Road or whatever. You can do it. The only way for them to control the internet is to shut down the entire internet and of course, then no one can bank, no one can work, no one can do any of those things. Yeah. So they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. So the US can't stop people from buying and selling Bitcoin and trading Bitcoin. Mm. But what they can do is say, we're going to bring in some rules and regulations, like what they did when they said it's now illegal for you to hold gold in the 1930s. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, there were some people who hid their gold away and just didn't tell anyone. Hopefully, yeah. the neighbors didn't perform them and the sniffer dogs didn't find the gold. <laughs> um, so some people will be using Bitcoin and in anonymous wallets and things like that. And some people will go, oh, you know what? I'll have the US currency. I'll have the digital yeah. currency. But the government is going to control that. They're going to manipulate it. So if you have to, if you work with someone else, you have to get paid in cash or in a central bank digital currency, well, okay, sure. But by all means, get away from that control as much as you can. If you can yeah. just save 10% and put it into a decentralized currency that's not controlled and manipulated by the government, then absolutely do that. I mean, mm. obviously, we're going to see spikes in, in stock prices. We're going to see spikes in, in crypto prices because at the moment, it's legal for someone to manipulate that market, market yeah. because there's no law against it. So yeah. they can jump in there. They can make the price go up to 75000 and drop back down to 30000 and that's just par for the course. It's what just happened in but, the last few months. Right. I know. Yeah. But the government can also do that. 
Central banks can also do that. Like Senegal, 1994, I was speaking to a guy who was, um, his parents had saved up for years and years and years. He was very, very bright. His parents were going to send him to the US to go to university because there wasn't a lot of opportunity in Senegal. You can be very well educated, but there's no jobs going. And yeah. in 1994, they had the money saved up and they were about to send him overseas. Mm -hmm. And the Senegalese government, the Senegalese government needed to borrow some more money from the IMF. And they said, hey, look, we need some money. And the IMF said, yeah, we'll give it to you, but you must devalue your currency by 50%. What? And they were like, holy crap, right? And it wasn't just Senegal. There was a few other, few other countries in, in emerging economies where the IMF has done this to them. And so all of a sudden, like, say, for example, he had $50,000 saved up to go to, the, go to the US and go to university. Now it's worth 25. Over the night, <laughs> one day, 24 hours, it's worth 25. And he's like, holy shit, we're going to start oh saving God. again. And again and again, governments can do this to the currency. You know, we've yeah. seen currency. And beyond governments, it's it's the three letter organizations that are stronger than the governments. IMF yeah. is this is the center of this financial dictatorship because that's effectively what we live under is a financial dictatorship. We're all like watching the puppets of the politicians, but these guys are up there controlling everything for real. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean. Who was that? Who was that? Was it Rothschild? Baron de Rothschild? He said, I don't care about who runs the country. As long as I can as control, long as I the control the currency. supply. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the truth of it. All right. So long, long on Bitcoin. So you reckon regardless of the manipulations, regardless of the ups and downs, if you looked- Where five, else are you going to hide? Like, it's going to be manipulated, but every currency is manipulated. Every, and gold and silver is manipulated, like you said, yep. but l less so than- the fiat currency, especially because these bastards are printed forty percent of the new currency in the yeah. last two years, so that is a massive manipulation, well beyond any whale pumping and dumping, you know, Bitcoin mm. or gold and silver. That's incredible manipulation. Um, a central bank digital currency is the ultimate manipulation in that you can't buy groceries or beer or travel further than your thirty kilometers around your house if they choose it. So, yeah. so it's like the lesser of two evils. So you reckon five, 10 years, if I just, cause I, I had quite a bit of Bitcoin. I did have quite a bit of gold. And I, mm. when I launched Permacare, I invested like hundred K of my own money, trying to build community on the Gold Coast, funded it myself and had to sell my gold, haven't bought it back, um, but I'm investing in land instead. But I've got probably three quarters of my money out of, I'll say Bitcoin, but crypto, I've got like 10 different yeah. cryptos, but I'm leaving enough in there just to see what happens. <laughs> you know, like I just want to be in the market because I'm either going to lose it. And if I lose it, it's not a big deal. Like I would like yeah. the money, but if, but if it goes where some people are saying it's going to go, then it could be worth something really like in 10 years time, that can be my retirement fund, let's say. Yep. What do you think if I, if I extrapolate 10 years into the future by 2030, the great reset is 2030 going to be Bitcoin is at five hundred dollars or something along those lines is it gonna keep going up mm. long term like we've seen gold do over how many you know centuries i'm 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 been in the market long enough and wise enough wisdom enough uh to not usually provide a prediction like with it with a definite date or with okay, a definite cool. price yeah like say i'll say something could go up something could go down um, and we'll say this, this is probably what's likely to happen because of what the government's doing, because of what's going on. But recently, for the first time ever, I actually put out a bet and said, if Bitcoin is not $100,000 US by 30th of June, 2024, I'll buy everybody who reads our blog at Coke. All right? That was my price prediction. 100000 by the end of 2024. By June, June 30th, oh, June, 2024. So end that of financial year. That's the first year, time. June, June yeah, 2024. I, I so actually that's, put a, a that, date and a price on it. Mate, that's interesting. Why? Why have you said that it's going to be 100K when it's now 30 in 24 yep. months' time? What are the indicators? Um, what, what's your feeling on it? There's, there's something called the stock to flow model. And anybody who's investing in gold and silver will be familiar with Like, There's a certain amount of gold under the ground. And there's yep. a certain amount they can dig out every year. And again, back in the 1860s, anybody could just take a shovel and, and chip a bit of gold off. But it gets harder and harder and harder and harder to get. Yep. Um, and so that's why the price keeps going up. Because yes, there's some, still some gold under the ground. There's still some silver under the ground. But every year, it gets harder and harder and harder to get. And same thing with Bitcoin. It's got this halvening built in. Every four years, the reward is halved. Mm. So the stock to flow of Bitcoin is what we look at, and again, comparing it to other scarce commodities like gold and silver that can't be created, can't be inflated. Mm -hmm. and looking at the price and saying, 
if you follow the stock to flow model, it'll show you that I'm on a very safe bet. I'm not going to have to buy a coat for anyone. Interesting. Right? But there's still going to be fluctuations. I mean, like, you know, Bitcoin's yeah, but you've got to ride down. the storm, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, but if, if you're was, willing to. Twice that. Yeah. Like, yeah. If, if, again, like, say with the, the Microsoft and the Apple, right? So if I told you in 1999, these stocks are going to drop by 60, 80%, you might be going, holy crap, I better sell out, right? And a lot of people obviously did when the price started going, going down. But if you knew the future and where those companies would end up in the next 20 years, would you be selling? Hell no. You'd be buying mm. more and buying mm. more on the way down because you don't want to say, oh, look, yeah, I sold all my Microsoft stock for 20 bucks, you know, back in the middle of 2000. And yeah. what is it worth now? Right. Yeah, Plus yeah, the yeah. dividends yeah. and the earnings and all that. Sort so of are stuff. we on the way down? Is Bitcoin on the way down to the point where you would be like, you know, start moving into the market with Bitcoin now, knowing that oh, your okay. prediction in 24 months is going to be three and a bit times the price that it is today. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, general advice only. I don't know your own circumstances. I don't yeah, know yeah, the circumstances yeah. of anybody yeah, listening. Yeah. But I'm, I'm buying it like as fast and as frequently as I can. And again, the fluctuations. Mm. So, you know, if, if you're putting in 10 bucks a day, you get a little drip feed Bitcoin app on your, on your phone. Yeah. Um, you put in 10 bucks a day. Obviously, when it's 60,000, you're buying a little tiny bit. When it's 30,000, you're buying a lot more. And all the way down, you're buying a bit more. But you're just getting Do in that Dollar cost saving. averaging. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. but how, how far is it going down? Like I've seen people, experts on YouTube. You've got to trust the experts on YouTube. By the way, this show will be on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to another expert on YouTube. But they're saying it Check could go down to- the qualifications of these people, man. That's very true. On TikTok who's saying, oh, it's going to go down to $8,000. And like- well, I saw 3000 so you tell me, I'm seeing three. So how far is this thing going down, man? I'm sitting at 30, like I, I, the last week. That's, that's why I reached that's out to it. you. I was like, man, do I need to sell? You reckon that's it? That's the bottom. 30's that's the bottom. It. Yeah. Well, maybe why? 28, maybe 29. But around this, because, yeah, that's fine. But why? It's, why? It's, it's dropped down to this level. It's been there for a while. And there's obviously people who are trying to push it lower. And these yeah. guys, obviously, you know, I, I won't mention their, <clears throat> their, their name, fund managers in the U.S., yeah, yeah, who yeah. tried to dump the Bitcoin because they were they were taking the opposite bet. They were making money when it goes down. But what happens? Bitcoin got down to thirty thousand, and you've got the government of El Salvador who's buying Bitcoin, and they're yeah, actually yeah. selling bonds on the open market to raise money from their citizens to buy more Bitcoin. You've got the Central yeah. African Republic who's buying Bitcoin, saying this is going to be our currency now. Because obviously, wow. living in the middle of Africa, they saw what happened with Senegal. They saw what happened with the Ivory Coast. They saw what happened with Zimbabwe. And yeah. they're going, we don't want to be controlled and manipulated by rogue governments, either our own or the IMF or the US dollar. We yeah. want to have our own stuff and we're going to back it. And sure. obviously, yes, you can back a currency with gold, but gold is very hard to transport. You imagine and you get a shot when you do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you're trying to leave a country with gold or silver. It's yeah. very heavy to carry and it can be, it can be taken by someone. But if you've got Bitcoin on your phone or in your head, hide it in the secret app. Yeah, in your head or on your on your email, it's, it's yeah. easy to transport. You can literally cross the border with a billion dollars if you had that much money, yeah. and no one can steal no, it. I don't even know. You can't yeah. you can't transport a billion dollars without having armed security guards and and mm. bulletproof trucks and all that sort of stuff. So this is again, it's it's the internet of money. It's Web three where we can actually send value. Yeah. Same way that we send emails and cat letters videos. And <laughs> cat videos. And that sort of stuff. Social media. So, All right. So 30, 28 ish. This, we're, the, we're at the bottom of the market now, in your opinion, on Bitcoin. And yeah, over the we're next 20 Government's buying it. Not, it's not just the big that's, government. That's, buying but here's the it. thing Gadda Gaddafi got, got hung, and, and Saddam Hussein got hung uh, mm -hmm. because they wanted to take their currency like El Salvador oh, Scotty, because they had weapons of mass destruction. yeah what a load of shit that is yeah <laughs> and, and 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 we did land on the moon once right yeah yeah um, but either way the, it's El Salvador now going to be targeted by this flailing death throes of economy that is the US like they did with Gaddafi yeah. and Hussein and Central mm -hmm. African Republic are they now going to be you know attacked because they're trying to do what these guys did with gold but with Bitcoin well maybe maybe you google some of the images of what actually happened after the US invaded and Gaddafi and Hussein and how were terrible the country gold. became. Have a look for the for the for the pictures of the US soldiers stacking gold bullion into the back of trucks. Really and we're talking thousands of tons. Thousands of tons. 
the US was going in there looking for weapons of mass destruction, what they found was gold because oh my gold God. was actually destroying the US economy yeah. by not using US dollars. But you imagine going into El Salvador and trying to steal their Bitcoin? Yeah, exactly. Oh, dear Mr. That? President, where are you hiding your Bitcoin? Right? Yes. Forget tell, about it. Tell us your 12 words. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's going to have them ripped up and backed up like they were the 11 secret purpose spices. Like you will never, yeah. ever find it. So yeah. there's no way they can actually go in there and steal all that stuff. Crazy, eh? You know, it, it's, a, it's an economic decision because you, you, so you, you Bitcoin could be Bitcoin could in be it, literally the future of freedom. If it gets embraced in the way that you're saying it's embraced, the fact that it, it, you can transfer it anywhere, the utility of it's there, the built-in 21 million scarcity is there. Uh, mm-hmm. It cannot be manipulated to the point of CN, like central bank digital currencies. Um, only the whales can do that, but they can do with that gold anyway. It's literally like a digital gold is what you're saying. And therefore, inevitably, with the collapse of this financial system, current US dollar financial system, where are you going to put your wealth? as this 40% inflation goes crazy, gold, silver, or Bitcoin. Mm. And you're sort of saying it's inevitable that this has to go up. It has to go up in value. Gold's gonna go up, silver's gonna go up. And I believe that both of those will truly go up uh, because it has Mm. always been the store of wealth. But now all of a sudden there's a rogue player in your head, on your iPhone, in your computer, that is Bitcoin, that has more utility. But as long as people, and as you said, governments are now doing it, not only financial institutions like hedge funds and whatever are buying it, the belief in it because you only love gold because everyone else loves gold right you know it's useless unless people are going to trade it with you now enough people to the point of these massive institutions including governments you're saying it's inevitable it has to happen it has to go up there's no other way when when satoshi did the white paper um what was that back 2008 2009 you're blowing my mind by the way you're blowing my mind right now i don't even realize this because this is what i've been sitting on like is this real is this really going to mind oh that's what we're here for yeah exactly So Satoshi said, like, you know, I'm going to introduce this currency that cannot be controlled, cannot be manipulated, cannot be hyperinflated. Yeah. Um, and either you believe in it or you don't. But he said an interesting thing. He said, okay, so maybe this could become nothing. It's just a project that a few geeks and nerds got into and, you know, it didn't go anywhere. Or maybe it will become the reserve currency of the world, yeah. like gold was always the reserve currency of the world, right? And he said, okay, it's either going to be nothing or it's going to be the reserve currency of the world. Now, is there a chance that it will be worth nothing? And he said, no, I don't believe it'll be worth nothing. Is there a chance it'll become the reserve currency of the world? Maybe, mm. but even if it was a billion to one shot, wouldn't you want to take that shot? Mm. You know, and back then, Bitcoin were trading for like 10 cents. Yeah, five exactly. cents. back nothing. then, like, billion, billion to yeah. one, let's go. It costs you nothing. Laszlo bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. So do the math on that, right? Yeah. So Bitcoin was worth nothing. And here's this guy saying it could be the reserve currency of the world. So it might be worth accumulating a few. And as, as you said before, investing, but not banking the farm on it. Don't, don't yeah. take out a big loan against your house because you've seen people manipulate the, the price of Bitcoin down by half. Yeah. Right. And if you borrowed against the house and the house has gone down by half, then you're toast. But if mm. you're putting in money that you can afford to lose and money yeah. that you can afford to sit on, because even if you look at the stock chart, like stocks don't go straight up. They go up yeah. and down and up and down and up and down. And sometimes yeah. we have a GFC-like event. Sometimes there's a war. But if you've got good stocks that you know are going to be around for the long term, you hang on to them and they bounce back. And if mm. you can, you buy a few more while they're cheap. At the bottom. As, like, mm. Like three years ago, we didn't have any billionaires in Bitcoin, right? There was none. Three years. It was years. just the nerds and the geeks. And yeah. then like Elon Musk got in, Jamie Dimon got in, Ray Dalio got in. You know, these guys have got in just basically during the pandemic. Yeah. And we're, we're starting to see Bitcoin was like less than 1% of the population were in Bitcoin. Now it's like 2.5%. Hmm. And people go, oh my God, it's so That's volatile. small, so volatile. hey? Like it's that small. So many people know about it, but only 2.5% of people are actually yeah. in it. But you look, look back 100 years and say, everyone knew about the stock market 100 years ago. Yeah. And they'd see it on the back of paper. But how many people were actually invested in the stock market 100 years ago? It was like the, literally the, the elite 1%. Yeah. There was 1% of people who were actually investing in the stock market back yeah. then. And of course, when the Boer War broke out in 1898 or 1899, the stock market went down because let's let's exaggerate and say the one percent of people there was only ten people who held stocks. They all panicked. They all freaked out. They sold, and it took a long time for those guys to feel confident enough again to buy back the stock they'd sold. Mm. Right? 
Now, since the 1970s, when the stock market has opened up and they've got mutual funds and things like that, where basically anybody with 10 bucks can buy stock, now they've, they've lowered the barrier to entry. So as soon as the market crashes, there's someone like you and me jumping in and buying. Mm. So the volatility, if you look at a chart of the stock market over 200 years, massive volatility for the first century. Right. Massive. Because there was so few people in there and it was yeah. easy to freak them out, like a little flock of chickens. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now there's more and more people in there. And yeah, Bitcoin dropped from 60,000 down to 30,000, but it didn't go down to five. At the start no, of the right. pandemic, it went down to like five or 6,000, but it didn't mm. go that low this time. Why not? Because we've got banks, governments, institutions buying it. As soon as they see it drop down to 30,000, they're like, they're pile on up. in. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Whereas two or three years ago, they weren't there. Now there's more and more people. So when there's 5, 10%, 15% of the population who own Bitcoin, the volatility will decrease. It'll drop by a few dollars right. and someone will jump in and buy it. Yeah, yeah. I wonder when that'll happen, you know, like, and, and what number, what percent would then uh, make it more stable? Because look at, you know, actual dollars, US dollar, Australian dollar, whatever. Mm. It is quite stable compared to the stock market, but compared to crypto. <laughs> Every it's day, like a, but only by a few but cents. But a little bit. You're right. It doesn't freak you out. Crypto, you wake up and you're like, holy shit, I just lost like 30% of my wealth. That just happened, yeah. you know, like in the last you're few weeks. You're just showing your white privilege here, Scott. Well, that's very so, true. I'm, I'm one of the 2.5%. And, and and for most you're, people... You're, you're in one of those countries where, where they report on the news and say, oh, the US dollar's up or down one or two cents. But imagine yeah. if you lived in sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah. You know? All of a sudden, the US dollar has gone from 50 cents to $2 to $3 to 70 cents to, you know, because they're, they're measuring it in their own currency. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, they're so more, you, they're, You've so been blessed currency. to live in a country with, with a stable currency. but So in, their in currencies people, are going crazy, hey? They're like Central absolutely. African country. Really? So they'd have the volatility yeah. of crypto, but in their daily living, when they go to yeah, the yeah. shop to buy food and it's like, uh, you know, can, can only buy half of what I wanted today because the yeah, currency changed. A lot of the really. stuff is imported in, in those places. So, I mean, right. I've, I've been going to Bali for, for 20 years, right? Mm. It's just like Australia's holiday destination. Yeah, and, sure. you know, one year I went there and the exchange rate was 8,500 of their dollars to one of my dollar. And, yeah. you know, then the next year it was 10,000. Then the next year it was 10,500. Then it came back down to 8,000. So it's hovered around about 10,000 for yeah. 20 freaking years. Yeah, right. But yeah. any time these guys get close, as an emerging nation, any time they get close to like, oh, we're almost paying, starting to eat away at capital and starting to pay off our debt to the IMF, guess what happens? Coincidentally, their currency is revalued. Interesting. Which means they've just, they've climbed up three steps and then they've been knocked down by it. Yeah. And so they have to start coming By up the again. IMF, right? Get back to your place. <laughs> we can't all be rich around here. But, 360 yeah, so million currency people. manipulation is, is massive. And obviously, yeah. you know, the cent central banks are controlling the game and, and people like you and I could never actually hope to win it unless yeah. we had crystal balls or unless we had a time machine or something like well, that. Well, you've got a crystal it's, ball right now, mate, because you're saying it's going to go no lo lo less than 28, which is about where it's at. I think it's 30, 31 yeah. today. And it's going to go as high as 100,000 in 24 months. So who's got the crystal ball? Have you? Well, I'm putting my crystal balls on the table for the first time. <laughs> for the first time in 30 for the years. the first time in 30 years. Because you see the indicators, that stock flow or whatever it was called, stock yeah, to flow. stock to flow model. And also that, what's, what's yeah. going on in the world. In the globe. Because I was thinking about this when you were saying earlier, was and, and get chickens, grow food, have less reliance on the system. Absolutely, 100% must be done. But then we were talking about buying silver and gold coins and going, hey, mm. mate, I've got to get a gas of fuel. Do you want to take this gold coin? It's real. What yep. about Bitcoin? Everyone's got one of these. I can just yep. open up my phone and go, hey, mate, can I send you you know, a little bit of Bitcoin and you yep. can pay this guy? Because all the, the guy at the cash register is like, you go to the small stores and be like, hey, mate, you know, cash is trash. What about some Bitcoin for some fuel? And they'd be like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'll take yep. your Bitcoin. And it's so much no, easier. There'll be someone else who will. There'll be someone else on the street. It's so much easier than gold and silver. So again, the utility if it can be accepted, like we're saying, and that percentage of people who use it increases, you know, to that 5, 10, 15, whatever it is. But the utility is way more than gold and silver. Me carrying a, a bag of gold and silver that I can get robbed on the street or me carrying Bitcoin on my phone that's got a face lock and, and you know, an access code and you name it. Again, for where we're going with an inevitable currency uh, inflation, hyperinflation, and I agree that hyperinflation will happen. Guys, hyperinflation is when shit just goes crazy. You can't even keep up with it. You know, one Zimbabwe, day you wake up. Venezuela. You know, yeah, exactly. You, you can't keep Germany. up with it. 
and that's that's yeah. inevitably you print this much money and you you create this much chaos it's going to happen so when that happens people will be looking for other ways to extract to exchange value potentially bitcoin and other cryptos pegged to bitcoin because bitcoin moves and everything else does have a lot more utility or a lot easier to do so maybe again for that average joe who's got that little bit of extra cash that 10 percent, whatever it is on their income gold and silver yes what about setting up like you said one of those wallets i do it on revolut uh revolut app i'll include a link in the description guys and you can check it out it's really great but i think i get a commission too no what is it like 25 yeah, yeah. bucks for referring someone so there you go use my link um yeah but revolut's great i've got it set up that it's just i had it set up then i turned it off because i freaked out i was Fuck bitcoin you know but it was just buying crypto in the background i think it was like 50 bucks a week i didn't even recognize i didn't even know it was there and it was just buying 50 bucks of bitcoin uh, every week on my app. Maybe people can be doing that right now. While times are still good, make hay while the sun shines, get something yeah. like that set up and that money that you forget about anyway, or you're gonna spend it on something useless, have that being just automatically buying Bitcoin, backing on Jeremy's crystal balls here, then, you know, that it is, and I've seen 500,000, but you're saying 100,000, it'd be a bloody good win. I'm conservative. You are conservative and I love that. So maybe again, cause I wanna help people. That's what this is about. For the average person right now, go and set up a Bitcoin wallet on Revolut. It takes two minutes, easy, or Binance or whatever you're using. Do, do they get twenty five dollars worth of free Bitcoin, or is it just probably? Like I don't know what yeah. it is. There's some because trans- that, mate. make sure they get something free. Yeah, right. Exactly. Probably there is. They get something. They get the first exchange fees or whatever it looks like. But yeah, some yeah. sort of app doesn't matter if it's Revolut or whatever. Use something and start to get that Bitcoin coming in. Turn, move the, the extra money that you've got there each week away from fiat, away from your Aussie or your US dollar and start putting it into Bitcoin as a, a bank to the future against inflation. Is that, that's what I'd be recommending. What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, like before, before the plane crash hit, right? Everything was going wonderfully well, you know, 2000, 2001. Yeah. Um, I actually, at that time, I was, I was in my twenties. I took out a half million dollar loan, right? took out a half million dollar loan and invested it in the stock market. Right? Holy shit, you, you got big but, crystal balls. <laughs> but I also insured it so that if, if the market crashed, yeah. then I could just hand the stocks back, right? Oh, and the insurance okay. is a tax deduction. It's like when you buy a house, if you're investing in a house, you buy insurance in case the house burns down, right? Yeah. You can insure your stocks, you can insure your crypto and things like that. There you go. Don't worry about how, we'll, we'll sort that out later. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very complicated, but I insured my stocks. so. What happened when the plane crash hit? Obviously, you know, tech stocks went down. People were panicking, going, oh my God, no one's ever going to travel in a plane again. So airline mm. stocks went down. Banks and insurance companies went down because they went, oh my God, there's going to be billions of dollars paid out for these buildings. And then there's going to be a war, right? And we had a big fear there's going to be this ongoing war with the terrorists. We didn't even know who they were back then. Yeah. Um, but people in Australia started calling up their friends in America saying, are you okay? I love you in case there's a world war tomorrow. Like, you know, what's the most I care about you? So stocks in Telco, Telstra went up because oh, everybody was phoning everybody. Yeah. Stocks, people started accumulating tin food and bottled water. So Coles and Woolworth stocks went up. So mm. in my portfolio where I borrowed half a million bucks, which was a lot of money back then, a yes. um, couple of my stocks went down and I just handed them back. But I actually had gains in the grocery stocks. I had gains in the Telcos. And I'm like money for jam like while while the world is burning down there's always an opportunity when there's a crisis mm. somewhere there's always an opportunity all right and now we've got this money printing crisis because the banks don't know what to do and they're going oh my god you know we've printed so much money and now the prices have gone up people are complaining what are we going to do well um i don't know you could actually have decent currency backed by something mm. or guess what when people start complaining the price of food have gone up the government's going to go, yeah, let's just get the central bank to give them more stimulus checks yeah, yeah. and that'll keep them happy. But then the more stimulus checks you print, the more the price goes up. And this is why we had things like, you know, Weimar Republic in Germany and, and Brazil um, and Zimbabwe and these kind of guys, Venezuela, where the money printing started and inflation went up by like 10%, 20%. And all of a sudden it's 300%, 10,000%, wow. you know, 60,000% because it just starts this curve where you're printing money to paper over the cracks. But the more money you print, the more it's worthless and people are accumulating this cash and they can't buy food. So you start printing more cash. It's just, it's a bit of a nightmare. Mate. Point of the story is 
accumulate something where you're less reliant on the system and where they the can't system. control it. They can't yeah. control the price of my eggs. I've been getting free eggs for the last couple of years. Price of eggs in Australia recently hit $14 for a dozen. What? And a few years ago, it was $2.40. It was literally 20 cents an egg. Right? A few years ago, it was $2.40 for a dozen. Now it's $14 for That's a dozen. That's ridiculous. It, you know, organic, farm, fresh, blah, blah, blah. But mine are because I know what I feed my chickens. Right? Everything's organic. So if you're less reliant on the system and just with a little bit of money, just you're just taking a bet on the long term. Every time you go grocery shopping, if you buy a little bit more tinned food and a little bit more bottled stash water, it stack away. it away in the back of the yeah. pantry. If there's no world war, great. If there's no food shortage on asparagus spears or, or corn or whatever, great. You've still got that there for the next three years. Mm -hmm. right? It's okay. It's going, to, it's going to be used. And like, if you didn't know, Scott, if you didn't know that the Bitcoin price had tanked, if you weren't watching the social media and the news because you live out in a log cabin in the middle of nowhere with your chickens and you're growing your own veggies. We got 30 chickens. Panicked, <laughs> right? You wouldn't have panicked. You wouldn't have, wouldn't have sold. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. You just keep your stuff. And in, in three years' time, it's going to be fine again. As yeah. I say, like when, when, the, when the planes went down, stock market tanked. But within mm. a year or so, everything was back to normal. This right. is a crisis that we're going through and it might last two or three years. It might last up to five years. But there is going to be companies who are making money while there's chaos in the streets. Mm -hmm. you know, every time there's a crisis somewhere, there's an opportunity somewhere else. Blockbuster video stock went down to zero, but Netflix stock went up. You know, we're all mm -hmm. streaming on these services now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people stopped having meetings and so the, the vacancy rates in buildings went up and landlords who own commercial properties were screaming and crying, yeah. but Zoom stock went up, right? Mm -hmm. And now we're starting to see it flowing back the other way. Hedge your bet. So I'm, I'm talking like crypto in general. Yeah. Bitcoin is obviously the godfather of, crypt, of, of, of crypto and yeah. Bitcoin has got that limited supply. Other cryptos can mint more so they can manipulate their own prices. Mm -hmm. And you have to look at them again, like looking at the stock market. There's a thousand stocks on the stock market maybe the top 200 are good but again good at different times because mm -hmm. if there's a war on you want to be investing in armaments and phone companies and food companies and things like that if it's peacetime you want to be investing in discretionary spending and fun and entertainment Luxury. Things like yeah. that. Or, so diversify diversify don't just put all your money into into bitcoin like you wouldn't be stupid enough to put all your money into blockbuster video mm -hmm. or put all your money into myspace all your money into nokia when everybody used to have a nokia phone because yeah. something comes out of left field and suddenly the market leader isn't the market leader anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you've got the top 10 or if you've got a diversified crypto mutual fund, you know, I'll just advertise Boston coin right there at that point, um, where someone's actually doing the diversification for you, yeah. if one of those things disappeared, no problem. Like we yeah. just had the lunar crash, right? And I'll be absolutely upfront. Boston coin, we had 2.5% exposure to lunar, right? So when that thing went to zero from a hundred bucks, basically to zero, two and a half percent of our portfolio fell over. And that's okay because 97 and a half percent of our portfolio is, is still good. Yeah. However, we have one of our big competitors and I won't mention their name because I don't want to rubbish them, but mm. they had between 20 to 50% of their money wow. in Luna and Luna just tanked. Now these guys, like they obviously tanked, they lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it was because they forgot the number one rule is diversification. Diversification. You know, mm -hmm. you don't put half your money into, into two stocks. Like you've got to have at least 10 or put it into a portfolio where someone's got 30, 40 different things. Mm -hmm. And you were asking me before about me personally. I'm like, yes, I've got gold. Yes, I've got silver. Yes, I've got Bitcoin. And I've also got other cryptocurrencies. And, you know, in 10 years time, if Bitcoin takes over as the reserve currency of the world and gold is worthless, well, I'll have some shiny metal and I'll be able to show my grandchildren and say, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is what used to be money back in the olden days. Yeah. You know? And if Bitcoin doesn't take over, if Bitcoin gets obliterated somehow or surpassed by a new technology, like MySpace got surpassed by Facebook and Nokia got surpassed by Apple and Samsung, mm -hmm. then if that technology disappears, then my gold and silver is going to go up massively in value. So and I'll be able to buy bets. stuff with yeah. that. You and I'll be able to say to kids, oh, this Bitcoin thing, that's what we used to use for money back in the olden days. Yeah. You know? Always, always diversify. Absolutely it, diversify for safety. And that, that rule has been the same for centuries. Yeah, and this is why I'm, I'm looking at the guys who are on YouTube and TikTok. Check their credentials. Check yes. where they've been getting their facts from. Have they been in the markets 20 or 30 years? Again, I was, I was new back when I was 19, 20 as a financial advisor. But I read the books 
from the mm. guys who'd come before me. Mm. I sat at the feet of some self-made billionaires and learned mm. lessons. I looked at the charts and I could actually back up what I was saying mm. with solid facts based on historical precedent. Some of these mm. guys had just gone for quick pay. So. Mate, you are a champion. And that's why I got you on to the Tribes United is you are someone that I trust. You know, I know you personally, met in Bali. It does, I know, 10 years ago, it must have been now. Um, and, you know, we've been friends since then. So thank you for sharing your wisdom. Uh, guys, what's your company called and how can people get in touch with you? Uh, it's Boston Trading Co. L lift your shirt up a little bit. You can see yep, it. Yep. There you go. Boston Trading so, Co. It's bostontrading.co. Um, cool. So no, no, no M on the end. It's not a .com. It's a .co. Great. Uh, so Boston Trading Co. is where we have a diversified portfolio for people who don't want to pick their own stocks and shares, people who don't want to pick their own cryptocurrency. You just dump it into a mutual fund. We look after Great. it. We do all the buying and selling for you. When the pandemic hit and the stock market went down by 60% and Bitcoin went down by 60%, our portfolio went up by 50% because wow. we were diversified into the other areas That's that actually do well when some things go down. Yeah. So bostontrading.co is where we actually look after the money for you. But yeah, there's some people out there who say, I want to do it myself. I'm like, mm -hmm. cool. We're going to help you. Even though you're not dealing with us, we're going to help you with our sister site, Crillionaire.com. So it's C-R-Y for crypto, like crypto cool. and millionaires mushed together. Oh, yeah. And we just provide free information. So if you want to do it yourself, at least you can avoid the scams. At least you can avoid okay. the dodgy things. Because again, yeah. like the stock market, like the crypto market, there's a lot of dodgy crap. But mm. there's also some good stuff. So if you're going to do it yourself, least we can do is actually provide a guidebook for you. And we update right. it every couple of weeks. So there's new projects and things that you can actually get into, like basic attention token. And, and there's, there's heaps of places where you can get cryptocurrency for free. So even mm. if you don't have any savings, you can get cryptocurrency for free oh, wow. and be part of the new revolution. Sweatcoin's another great one. You know, people who count their steps as they're running around. You know, this, this coin will actually pay you for running around. Same as basic attention token pays you just for surfing the web because they cool. want your eyeballs. They want you looking at their ads and things like that. So why not? I'm looking at ads anyway. I may as well get paid. Might as well get some. So yeah. crillionaire.com, you'll teach us about these things and how to actually invest ourselves into crypto, which yep. would be great. Um, and that the, the diversification across the crypto assets. So I was saying to people like start buying Bitcoin, which is a good beginning, but Yep. diversify within crypto as well. And to get that education, we head to crillionaire.com. Um, yep. I trust you, mate. This is the thing. Like, I, I trust you. You have a good heart. I know you personally. Like the yeah, TikTok. Thanks, bro. thanks, brother. The TikTok um, and YouTube Insta star guys, uh, this clickbait stuff. A lot of it is yep. self-interest. I've, I've not looked them in the eye. I've not sat and had a meal with them, you know, like, and so I can recommend you to people that are listening because I trust that your motives are pure. And after 30 years, you know, you've, you've been, you've earned the stripes, you've earned the stripes. Yeah. So Boston trading.co, um, go and check out Jeremy over there. And it sounds like to wrap it, mate, what you're saying to people, and I'm fully in agreement with you, less reliance on the system, mm -hmm. have some veggies, have some chooks. Maybe you can't feed your whole family, but at least you don't have to be, you know, all of your money has to go to actually your basic needs. Right. And maybe in that, like get rid of some of the things that you don't need. You know, simplify a little bit, especially, you know, if, if you're not earning so much, simplify a little bit and take that. And now you've got that extra invested either into that infrastructure, veggie gardens and chickens and, you know, being a bit off grid. But then let's look at predominantly, it sounded like you were saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, but gold, silver, bit, uh, crypto beyond Bitcoin, mm -hmm. but crypto, gold, silver, crypto is a great way to store value and be able to exchange value in the future. Uh, again, the highest mm -hmm. utility there would be crypto, but coins of silver and gold could work. Um, and then maybe some other commodities, but decrease, again, same as with your food, decrease your reliance on the system and their monetary supply, which could go into hyperinflation. So get your money out of cash, out of the system, and put it into these more decentralized gold, silver, crypto um, asset classes. Doing those two things is pretty much a, a, a good bet for the future of what's to as, come. As much as, much as you can. I mean, okay. not all of us can live in a, a log cabin in the middle of nowhere with no social media and no news. And that sort of I stuff. want no social media, let's, but I can't yet. Let's face it. <laughs> One day. <laughs> if, if you lived on a farm out in the middle of the boonie docks and it was yeah. like, you know, ancient Rome or ancient Greece or whatever, you wouldn't even know. Like yeah, if the king right. got killed and a new king came in and they raised the taxes, you wouldn't even know because you're just out there farming your potatoes and, and raising your chickens and things like that. 
yeah. from one year to the next, you wouldn't have a clue what the currency was worth or who was in charge. Mm. And it doesn't matter. So, yeah, not all of us can live that idyllic lifestyle. But mm. as much as you can, become less and less reliant. So if you've got a couple of solar panels on your roof and there's a, there's a blackout, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a war, but maybe just the, the electricity goes out because everyone's using their air conditioning in the middle of summer or using their heaters in the middle of winter. If you lose power for a couple of days, you, you're going to be okay with mm. a little bit of solar panel. And if you've, if you've got some tin food in the, in the, in the cupboard, you're going to be okay. Yeah. So this is what we're looking at. It's, Becoming less reliant on the on the system, becoming more reliant on yourself, more self reliant, yeah. educating yourself, or outsourcing to someone who can actually do it for you. Now, anybody mm. who goes to the, the bostontrading.co will actually will send them the free monthly newsletter. Great. Okay, so it's not going to bother you every day with with rubbish, but just once a month we send a newsletter saying, "Here's what's going on in the world economy. Here's what's going on in the stock market. Here's what's going on in crypto." And you can actually right. go onto the site and you can join that for free. You also get a free copy of my book, which was the one issued in 2006, which is all about how to pick your own stocks and shares. So people are like, I don't, I don't care about crypto. I don't want to know about crypto. Cool. Here's how to pick your own stocks and shares so Great. you don't have to rely on somebody else to do that for you. But on mm. the website, you can actually see like the last 50, 60 newsletters. So you can go, oh, this guy said he knew that the pandemic was going to happen. No, I didn't. You can actually look at the newsletter from September, October 2019 so I never mentioned about China virus, never mentioned anything about that, mm -hmm. but I did mention this is where you want to be some indicators. because of what's yeah. going on. Yeah, there's yeah. always indicators. You know, there's always indicators before something's happened. Mm. And it's best to jump out as soon as you see the iceberg dead ahead. You don't want to wait. You want to yeah. jump out and maybe you're the first person and you look like an idiot and everyone laughs at you. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. You know, in 99, when I was pulling people out of the stock market, the stock market continued to go up for the next 18 months. You know, in 2006, when I was pulling people out of the property market, out of the stock market, people were laughing at me. Like, whatever, I can afford to be laughed at. Like, no yeah. skin off my nose. You can't beat me up. You can't take away my birthday. You can just call me an idiot and it doesn't matter. But then later on, people go, oh, holy crap. He was right. So right. right now, it's get out of the system, effectively. Get out of the system, as, as much food as reliance, energy can. reliance. Yeah, yeah, of course. Food reliance, energy reliance, and financial reliance. Get out of the system and be a self-reliant or with these um, uh, gold, silver, crypto assets as possible. Uh, yeah. Or, yeah, go out Sa and Saving 10% like a year. As, as, yep. as, so like, no one, no one can, not everyone can go and be on the remote island in the middle of nowhere. But if you can yep. get one solar panel, if you can get five tins of food, if you can yeah. save 10% of your income, and imagine if you became 10% more self-reliant every year, yeah. it might take a decade, but in the next decade, you wouldn't care who was in control of the government. You wouldn't control, care if you know Russia invaded China or China took over India or whatever. You wouldn't care. It doesn't mm. matter. They're not I'm controlling my currency. Yeah. yeah, I've just got my food. And even if there is no such thing as the internet and no such thing as currency, you've got your tin of peas, you've got your chickens, your kids, you can educate them at home, whatever. Yeah. Like, who cares? Just becoming that space where you don't have to panic about every little item on the news and maybe turn off your social media for a while. Not you a bad know. idea. Not a bad idea. Nice. Hey, thank you so much, Jeremy. You are an absolute champion. Guys, go and check out Jeremy Britton. Uh, this man, as I said, is a man that I trust, hence why we're in this conversation. Uh, I appreciate you sharing your wisdom. You have a lot of it. Uh, particularly around this subject after 30 years of passionately diving into it. So you were my go-to guy for this conversation. Uh, but yeah, bostontrading.co sounds great. Crillionaire.com. We'll put the links in the description. Um, and otherwise, thank you so much, mate. And I hope to have you back for another conversation, maybe just before 2024, June 30. Ooh, what do you reckon? Or when that's it hits 100,000, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Thanks so much. Well, that was an exciting conversation. And I hope that you got as much wisdom out of that as that I did. Um, and maybe it sort of changed your perspective on a few things like it has mine. Uh, if you enjoy these sort of conversations, join the Tribes United. Come and connect with other leaders like Jeremy and like our other guests on this show that are here to come together to help each other to really thrive and prosper through these times. Uh, Tribesunited.org. Head over there, join the community and become part of this conversation. And if you did really get a lot out of this, do us a big favor and share it with other people. Tag somebody, uh, share this to somebody that you love and let them gain this wisdom as well as you. All right. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you in the next adventure.